Okay, so this is Hungry News and I really hope that today I can stick to only one subject. The subject of this episode is the EU. I mean Hungary as part of the EU. As you know, there is a quite a big country or union of countries or states called the European Union. It was founded by um, well, Germany, France and stuff, you know, the basic thing. What do you do after the Second World War? Well, you make a European Union and conquer Europe economically. Yay! But the thing is, it, it's kind of working. So, that's alright. Now, if you're uh, part of the European Union and watching this, well, you know what I'm talking about. If you are, for example, American, and I mean any kind of American, South American, North American, or Australian, Chinese, etc., um, which I know it's not part of America, I just, you know, anywhere else in the world, in Asia, or whatever, um, well, then you probably have heard of the, the European Union, well, as a kind of country. Now, Hungary is a part of it, which is really good. First of all, because it's a kind of uh, comforting to know that if some kind of war broke out, we would be protected by not, not just the NATO, the North, North Atlantic Army stuff, but because we are part of the U European Union, any attack um, is an attack um, against the European Union. So, as a big country, we have a, we are a small country with a small, small economy, we are constantly struggling in the middle of Europe, we are between East and West, and, well, you get the idea. It's kind of good for us. As part of the deal, like any deal, uh, in this, let's say, kindergarten of countries, there are big boys and small boys and big girls and small girls. Now, we are small ones. So, what does a small child do? Well, they can follow the big guys. So, the role for us in the European Union is nothing less and nothing more just to follow the big guys. I know it's not the best role in, in the history. I know it, this is not uh, as a big as, for example, we could be king of the world. But we are not. We are small. We are only 10 million people against... Uh, the United Kingdom's 60 million, uh, Germany's almost 100 million, France, I don't know, and so hundreds of, we are against hundreds of millions of people in this. So, what does our government do in this situation, which I described? No, it doesn't follow the big boys, it wants to dictate. And by dictate, I mean, you know, tell them what to do. So, our government, especially our, pr uh, our prime minister, you know, which is the government in person, when it goes to uh, any meetings, uh, he said that, well, we don't need the IMF, that international money stuff, we don't need the European Union, so they just... They, don't, they just don't tell us what to do. As a result, there is going to be a meeting in the European Union, which we are not invited. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be about many things, including us. The trick is, which... Um, um, frightens most of our um, economists is that the European Union says that uh, well we don't really need um, persons like this in the Union so uh, you 
elected a government which doesn't do much good. It created laws which are against the European Union you know, basic rules or constitution or whatever. I'm not an expert. But I know that they are against it because there was a memo about it. <clears throat> so, because we are against the system, we should be expelled. And this frightens our economists. Because alone, as a country, as Hungary itself, we will starve to death. Now, I looked at, in Wikipedia, however um, reliable that is, uh, the GDP in Hungary. And we uh, have a better GDP than Brazil, uh, a better GDP than Congo or South Africa, the uh, Republic of South Africa, or, oh, poor guys, I don't know them. Sorry. Uh, Egypt, Libya, and stuff. Or even, I don't know, I, I think Kazakhstan is under us. So, we have a very good average GDP. We don't starve. I mean, I don't starve. <clears throat> um, many of our people don't starve. They live day by day, by the way. So, um, I talked to my mother the other day and she told me about one of her colleagues. Uh, she, the colleague, uh, needs to have a, a second job, um, a not uh, proper and, um, well, how can I call it when you don't pay taxes? So, it's an unregistered uh, job. Uh, he she cleans houses a couple of houses uh, she's quite of sick but she is afraid to go to the doctors because if they diagnose her with something uh, they she can't work now she has a 16 year old son her husband left her and uh, basically she has one job a daily job and then after that she runs to this other job and she has a lot of debt uh, in the bank. So if for some reason she has a, a, a lower income that month, any given month, than the debt and the tax and everything, uh, the whatever we need to pay, I mean gas bills and stuff, so, when uh, she has a bad month, well, she increases her debt. And she doesn't want to do that, obviously. Who, who would do that? Who would want to do that? So, uh, this is one example for we are not starving, so we, you, know, you don't need to feel sorry for us. However, I know that uh, if... Uh, I know how our econo how our, our economy is uh, uh, how fragile it is I know that and I know how fragile any given economy is in the world so if our, uh, our economists fear and of course I fear that if um, the government keeps um, keeps up the good work let's say that then uh, our GDP will fall, by the way, um, and then, then um, as a result of that, we will really starve. So our GDP will fall, and uh, we may have to declare bankruptcy, and anarchy and stuff, you know, all that fun that comes with it. So, you know, I hope that this is just a healthy concern. Know that, for example, Mexico or in Argentina or in Brazil, there are protests and uh, possibly killings and stuff. And I know that the world is, well, is really faulty. Can I say faulty about the world? Um, well, let's say I can. 
Well, I make this program, so that's it. Um, so the world is kind of faulty, but, uh, you know, I, I can't say that I'm really grateful because I see the potential in our uh, government. I, I see that uh, there are many professionals in this country who, who know what to do. So there are a lot of theories and there are a lot of proven things uh, which was good for other countries and it could be uh, after a little bit of adaptation it could be good for us it could work for us but the truth is I believe that our government is still very stupid and they will not realize our, our um, MPs and our Prime Minister and the whole bunch will not realize that uh, how dangerous this situation could be it's not right now but it could be very very dangerous so of course I don't mean to startle you you have your own problems and I'm also really grateful that you listen to my theories about stuff and I hope that uh, this was a, a good inside information about Hungary so I believe that's that's the conclusion I mean uh, however wrong the European Union is or however faulty it is we can't afford to go against it it would be foolish however we do we are doing this right now so, I think this concludes today's program, and see you in the next. Thank you for watching.